GarageBand will crash. It's just a matter of when. There's a few different ways that it crashes. It's hard to actually make it crash. So what we're going to do is pretend that it's not working. So we're going to close out of it, flick up, flick up, and get rid of it. So let's say that we tap on GarageBand like this, and it doesn't load. You just get that blank screen with a little spinny thing, and it never opens your project. Well, this is usually due to the fact that there's a corrupt project in there that it's trying to open, but it's not actually able to. And unfortunately, GarageBand is designed that every time you open it, it will go back into your last project you had open. Now, a simple thing you can do to help with this sort of maintenance is whenever you close GarageBand, and this is a good habit to get into anyway, always do it from this screen. So instead of closing it, instead of being in your song and just going, all oh, right, I'm done with GarageBand now, I'm going to go over and jump over and play some sensual sax, what you want to do is whenever you're using GarageBand here and you've finished your project do just just close out just hit this button in the top left that will close the project it'll take you back to your opening screen and then when you reopen GarageBand will just reopen it let's let's try this now if we close this and we reopen GarageBand again it's going to come back to this screen it doesn't have to try to open another project and that can cause a lot of less angst because you're not going to get that crashing issue. Let's say you didn't take that advice and you are still struggling with this and you're getting that crash. Well, there's a couple of things you can do. Number one thing is to close and reopen. So we've already showed that here on the iPad. You swipe up from the bottom, so swipe up, and then you flick up to flick it away. If you're using a device that has a button, double tap on the button, flick it away and close everything. So let's just say that, you know, I had I had GarageBand open here. I was watching some Netflix. I was uh, had my music app open and I've got all these things. One of the best tips for fixing any bug or any problem here in GarageBand is to swipe up and close everything down because you've got stuff that's going to do background processes that are going to be trying to use your audio. They're going to be causing problems. So that's tip number two. Tip number one is make sure that you close out of your project before you close GarageBand. Tip number two is close any of your other apps. Tip number three, and I'm not going to be able to do this because I'm sharing my screen here, is to turn it off and turn it back on. Yes, it's the universal fix. It's called the universal fix for a reason because it fixes a lot of problems. A lot of the time when you're having problems with the garage band, turn it off and turn it back on. I wonder, can I press the button? I'm not going to attempt it. You know what it's like. You hold down your button. It's a side button on some devices. Like, here we go. I can do it. I'll do it on this phone because I'm not actually streaming the screen of this phone. So if we grab this phone and we tap and hold on, oh, no, sorry, that's the Siri button. What we need to do is tap and hold on the two top buttons on an iPhone 12. The two top buttons, we hold those two down. We get this screen and then to power off, you simply slide that over there. That is now off. I usually recommend, leave, just because I'm a creature of habit and you used to leave things for about 30 seconds to a minute, usually because they were hot and they had fans and you wanted to make sure that they weren't causing any problems, and then you uh, turn it back on. So we'll turn this one back on and you'll get your little Apple logo if you hold down on that power button. There you go. Apples, apples. So that is, uh, that is tip number three, I think. Now, if all else fails, none of that works, and you're like, Pete, I still can't get into my garage band. It's coming up. It's got, got the little spinning wheel. I hit the button here, and it just won't open. Well, there's one more thing you can do. You can actually reset your garage band. So if you come out to here, it's not within GarageBand and it's not there for a reason. It's not there so that in this exact case where GarageBand is not loading, you need to come in here to your settings. You need to scroll down on the left-hand side here until you get to, not surprisingly, GarageBand and then tap on that one. And over here on the right, if we scroll down to the bottom, we have this one, Reset GarageBand. Tap on that and then close out of this and when you reopen GarageBand with that setting, it will reset it. Now, you won't lose your, your songs. You won't lose your songs in iCloud. You won't lose your songs even on the device, but you will lose some of your custom settings. So you'll use like your knob gesture settings. <laughs> you, you lose your keyboard labels. You, you'll lose things like 24-bit audio. So you will have to go back into your advanced settings and just tweak a few things, but it will enable you. What it basically does is it resets GarageBand. It'll open up with that welcome screen that says, welcome to GarageBand, you're all good to go. Hit reset GarageBand, we'll then come back up here and we'll hit the GarageBand button and it's going to go, welcome to GarageBand. There you go, you can play, you can record, you can share. We'll continue here. Yes, you have a sound library. So here we are, if we go back into our guitar example song, uh, do we have all of our sound library? Uh, no, <laughs> do we not? Do I have to re-download everything? Uh, yeah. So they say new, but do I have them? Oh no, they're downloaded. Ah, cool. So there you go. We found out something new. So they all say new, 
but that's just because GarageBand resets what it thinks. I, that's right. I remember this from last time. So all you need to do if you're annoyed by those notifications is painstakingly tap on and off of each one of these new ones. Otherwise, that little new number thing will be there forever. I'll do this later. You don't need to watch me do that. Uh, but some of the, the settings that we'll need to, to change here, if we go back, is up here in your advanced settings. So you want to make sure you come back in here, you turn back on 24-bit audio resolution, turn back on running background mode, if you want that on there. And uh, you may want your use with music apps and your MIDI clock on there. Um, we'll turn on the monitoring. So yeah, they're, they're some of the things that you'll want to then change. And let's just check, since we're, since we're being thorough here now, let's just check our settings and see, yeah, so keyboard note labels has gone off as well. So that's another one that we'll need to add back in. And if you like using automatic recording length, you'll need to change that back there as well. The other common error that you're gonna get here in GarageBand is that your plugins and EQs are gonna disappear. So you'll come in here and you'll go to audio unit extensions and none of these will be here. Sometimes you'll just have these ones. Sometimes you'll have nothing at all. So if you get that problem, once again, two things, make sure that you uh, close out um, close out all your things and then close back in and then turn off and back on. And the other thing to consider is sometimes some versions of iOS and iPad OS had this problem more than others. The latest version, which I think is 14.7 at the time of, <laughs> time of this video or whatever your latest version is, and GarageBand 2.3.11, other ones that you want to make sure you have. So just make sure that you go into your app store, that you've updated to the latest version of GarageBand and that you have the latest version of iOS or iPad OS. 